Well, here it is July 12th, and because many ask how are things going, Jim, I thought I'd show you uh, just a brief overview of the four tanks. And this is, of course, the corner tank that we see so often. Uh, growing out still well, I still maintain my forest, as opposed to Bruce's very beautiful gardens. And uh, there's not much new in these tanks, as much as I just want to show you how things are growing out. And uh, in this particular tank, we've got a lot of babies. Uh, maybe sword tails, I think, mostly. Maybe some uh, wag platies. Between the wag, black wag uh, sword tails, you see the male going by there, and the black wag platies. I'm not sure which is which in the babies, but some are growing up. You see that beautiful green barb in the center messing around with the tiger barb. Uh, that's the last of the three. Uh, the other two died within a couple days of each other for no special reason that I could figure out. And then uh, just a short while ago we lost one of the three tiger barbs. There's two there. And now that green barb is constantly interacting with the other two. I want to say chasing. Uh, but the coolie loach chases everybody. And uh, once it gets on there, like it just chased that black angel, uh, it can swim amazingly well and keep right up with wh whoever it's chasing. Deep back in the center, and I think you may have missed it, but uh, there's a red tail shark, a black red tail shark that you know I love. I've added two other small ones to this tank, and they show up once in a while. I see one of them back over the left-hand corner, which you will not see. Uh, the neons continue to do well here. There's about 20 of them, and there's that black tail shark right in the center. Isn't he beautiful? He's growing up nicely, and I always like when they get to that point where they have a, a white tip on their top fin. A sign of maturity, I think. But anyway, um, that reddish plant just to the right of center continues to grow out nicely. That's uh, that one I told you I was so disappointed when I bought it, but I've been super pleased ever since. And so, uh, not sure what else I can tell you here with this particular tank. The three algae eaters um, that have been small, and I said, geez, they haven't been growing. They just moved out of range over there on the right-hand side. Uh, they hang out together. There's the one, and here comes the second one. No, the second one's going the other way. Anyway, and there's the big one. The big one is one of three. I put one out in the pond outside. Uh, I think I'll take you a trip out there and show you that later. And the other three have been small, but now they're starting to grow up. There's two of them right in the center. And uh, they're taking on some new looks. Their fins look a little on the yellow side, which is kind of cool. And uh, so things are doing well here, except for those couple losses. Uh, the Madagascar lace plant has got lots of leaves to it. Not as large width-wise as they were in the very beginning, but now they're growing out a little bit. So you can see that off right there. And uh, it's got quite a few leaves on it. And there's that red plant I was telling you about right in the center. And then the Amazon swords, of which you recall there's three. There's the one really high one here, and then there's a medium one, there's a low one right down in the front. And so, uh, oh, the other thing that I wanted to point out is over in this corner, we have the water wisteria uh, that I moved out from the office tank, as I told you. There's a baby up in it. Um, they are surviving here this time. In the past, uh, they've melted away to nothing, but it's been a month or two now, and they're holding their own, the two or three sprigs that I brought out here. And, of course, they continue to multiply in the office tank, as you will see shortly. All right, let's move over. Here's the bow tank again. And uh, the neons continue to do well here ever since we moved out that big upside-down catfish that obviously used them for food. 
The uh, angels are surviving now. I don't know what happened. As I told you in the past, I would put angels in here and I lost them all. And eventually uh, things have settled down. I've tried with a couple uh, buys from Fish Factory of two or three at some reasonable price. And you see the one right there in the center uh, that is doing well. And uh, this tank has a very colorful set of red wag platies, which do well. And it's got two plecos. Uh, there's a big pleco, I meant to mention this, there was a big pleco in the corner tank that is hidden most of the time. When I put some algae tabs in there, he tends to come out. And I've tried with my butterfly net as a trap to capture him, because we really do have to move him away. He's getting much too big. And I'd take him back to the hidden reef to get a credit for some other purchases, and I turn him in. But I have not been able to catch him. He's too smart for me. I put the algae tabs into that net. Maybe sometime I'll show you that process. And the other day I tried it, and he came in from the back side of the net, and I thought he was going to get trapped in that net. Did not work. So it uh, continues to be a frustration to try and get him out. But over here in this tank, uh, the two plecos, one of which you see right down in the center there, and just to the left of that in the very foreground, you see a bristle nose. Uh, albino pleco, and it looks like he's eating some type of uh, remainder of a fish. I guess I lost something. Anyway, there's two plecos in here, and they're st slowly getting bigger at some point in time. I guess I've since learned from some videos that uh, these common plecos get much too big for the community tank. I've always had them. I think they do a great job keeping the algae down, and I've had no problem at all with the algae on these two tanks. Uh, especially this one here. Of course, with all that plant growth, uh, it uh, does tend to keep the nutrients away from the algae, and uh, so it has not been an issue. Still have a problem with the one pearl garami that you see up toward the top here, right there. Got some type of growth on it. It's not ick. I've uh, spent $20 for a nick medicine that's guaranteed to work and I've been using it daily and it didn't touch it. So I'm not sure what that's about. Hasn't spread to the other fish and I hesitate to uh, discard a fish but it's been so long and now it's showing strange uh, swimming signs as you see there and some of the other fish are paying attention to it so maybe it's time to uh, release it into the wild as it were. The other thing in here that you won't see because they, they're sort of hidden, but uh, there's a school of zebras and they're right up in the center of that open area. There's three of them. There's six all together. They were what Bruce and I picked up in that trip to East Brunswick and they continue to look very, very healthy. They're full. I wasn't sure if they were all females. How would you get ten fish, all females, out of the same tank unless they were all females? And so they either are very well fed, somehow getting their, more than their share of the food that I put in this tank, or uh, they are pregnant females, uh, you know, laden with eggs, I'm not sure. Up here over on the right, you have one of the other angels, a small black angel. And uh, one right in the center is that blue garami, one of a couple that are still here. I think there's four of them in this tank, but the planting is so heavy, especially with the Amazon sword, I'm sorry, not Amazon sword, well the Amazon sword is right dead center, hidden in the back, uh, but again that growth of that reddish plant in the center, but over on the right hand side here you have that uh, Madagascar lace plant that it seems to do well in a crowded tank. And then last time I think I showed you this particular plant. I didn't need a plant like a hole in the head, right? But it was so beautiful uh, that I just had to buy it. And so it's sort of hidden down there. I don't have any room is the problem. And so, uh, and I will not get rid of the plants. I trimmed them just the other day and I just keep planting them back in there, making it too thick, of course. But uh, I, I do bring some up to Bruce when I see him. Uh, he trims them back and throws them away, which I say, Bruce, don't do that. But anyway, that's his way of keeping his gardens looking so beautiful. And my way of keeping these, uh, for those of you who like thickly grown out plants, uh, my tanks are your envy.
and I appreciate that. I really do love your comments and thank you for that. And any advice on that uh, pearl gourami up there? Uh, like I say, it, it looks like just uh, some white spots. It's not ick. They're, they're tinier dots than that. And I don't know what that's about. I think it's time to make a decision. Oh well. Hey, let's move on. The beta tank continues to be amazing to me in these small spaces. Uh, both of these bettas, without having anybody tear at their fins, just keep growing out their fins and they look gorgeous. Especially the one on the right with that multicolored blue into red. Uh, it's not well lit up, which is part of the problem in trying to show you this. But nevertheless, they are both doing so well and they're obviously getting very mature. They're bigger now and their fins are just magnificent. I could not be more pleased as you can see especially with this one and the red one is no slouch either when it comes to big fins and uh, showing off and they're very friendly as soon as you come near to the tank they are expecting some type of food I guess and so it's uh, very nice very nice and here in the office tank this tank is really getting to be more and more overcrowded. You can see a lot of yellow and orange in the platies and the uh, creamsicle mollies with the liar tails. But uh, the guppies and you recall I moved that very pregnant uh, green sword tail in here and uh, she's produced quite a few babies and of course the guppies continue to grow up very nicely now. It wasn't always the case, but uh, they're growing up into very pretty young females and uh, the males are doing their thing. Uh, so we've got a lot of fish in here, a lot of fish in here. And when I put the algae tabs every day into this tank, down here becomes a feeding frenzy for everybody. Uh, there's that female swordtail I was telling you about. She's done a beautiful job. And so I moved a couple of those guppies and a couple of platies out into the pond outside, the half barrel pond, which I'll show you once I get this camera charged up enough to be able to go out there without being plugged in. But uh, there are literally hundreds of babies in this 30 gallon hex tank. And again, uh, you look at the planting, that water wisteria continues to grow out nicely. And uh, I've been able to propagate the plants and their root systems there out into the other tank, that corner tank. Uh, so it grows out well here and uh, now it's starting to survive out there. The other thing that's nice in here, and uh, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about by putting in a plant tab or two here. I'm going to put a, an algae tab rather here and let's see how quickly the feeding frenzy starts. There you see the tab going down. And once the fish sense it's there, you'll see the two clown loaches that do so well in this particular tank. Everybody's up here thinking I'm going to feed them at the top, but I'm not. And so you'll see that the sense of the algae tab will draw attention very quickly. And the two clown loaches are really growing out nicely. I'd love to put them in one of the other tanks, but the other tanks, each one, I lost the clown loaches that I had in there uh, very quickly to some type of ick, which is very common in those. And so there's one of the clown loaches. Look how big he is. Isn't that amazing? And the other one will be right there if it's not there already. There's, one, there's the second one just coming in and those two are growing out nicely and like I say they uh, they they give you that the challenge the uh, the, the challenge of you know if, if you buy a fish that hides all night all day and you never see it why buy it I mean if you can't enjoy it right and so 
they come out when I feed them and they're pretty active most of the time but you can see the feeding frenzy that's developing down around that algae tab and so I put one of those in a day and everybody gets down there and fights for it and I'm surprised even with all that attention how long that algae tab actually lasts but uh, you can see what I'm talking about but in the barrel outside the half barrel pond that my wife gave me a couple years ago and we reestablished this year um, when you look in you really don't see any fish they're there and I throw some food in and all of a sudden there'll be activity but you can't really see the fish and so it becomes a matter of you know if you uh, want to enjoy the fish don't you want to see them or is it good enough to know they're in there and I put some plant clippings in there and they're all growing out nicely so I, it's one of those things that you enjoy but you don't get to see the fish and so lo and behold uh, at the end of the season when you fish it all out it's like okay you've uh, cooked this mixture <laughs> what what resulted from it all so uh, after this charge up I'll take you out there but uh, and it's funny I had that conversation with my sister Maggie uh, just today talking about their very beautiful pond which is all green water it's just the nature of the beast and of course you have to have a netting over it to protect it from the fish uh, from the birds coming in eating the fish and so you can't see the fish unless you throw food out there and then you see the the, the quick flashes of orange as the koi come up and some goldfish in there uh, to eat but other than that you've got fish that are hidden and in a beautiful big pond like that and it's such a shame that you have to have netting on it because it does take away from the whole scene so anyway, just wanted to share with you uh, what's going on in all the tanks. And uh, like I said, one more trip, we'll go outside once the battery's charged on this. Okay, just a very, very short, because I don't have much battery power here, shot of the garden, and specifically the uh, barrel pond, which is off in the distance here. I'll take you in for a close-up in just a minute. Of you see here the fountain and the pond itself. Can't really see the fish, but the plants are doing well. I gotta get that algae out of there. Anyway, okay, didn't mean for that uh, fish pond barrel to be that short, but the battery dropped out on me. And there really wasn't much more to see at this particular point. The fish are under the growth that's there. The plants, cuttings I put out there are growing so nice. And they're doing healthy, and I see some babies out there. So they must be doing well. Anyway, hey, thanks for joining me yet again today for a quick update. I keep saying it's a quick update, and yet I probably end up being 20 minutes, huh? Sorry about that. And uh, as you can see, I keep all my videos on the computer here, and you can see the background. Uh, this is the bow tank. That's the corner tank. And I thought it would be a nice backdrop to uh, give you a greeting and say hi and wish you a good summer. And uh, it's fascinating to have tanks indoors and to be able to do something outdoors, even if you can't see them. <laughs> but it's fascinating to imagine what's out there. So, enjoy your summer. Here's Jim from Jim's Fish Room Update, July 12th, 2019. I told her when it comes to talking, I'm the sweetest sweet talker in the world. Well, she said you better start talking if you want me to be your girl. And she said, 